Actually, it was Snake that got, well, I, I, as you know, I've been very quiet for a long time. And, uh, <laughs> we, <laughs> through choice, I have to say, but uh, I did a charity thing up in London for the uh, for, in Soho for the homeless, yeah. and I was doing a, a Ray Charles song, just myself on acoustic. And Snake was there with a, a friend of mine, Hamish Stewart from the Average White Band. They were, <laughs> Snake was playing with him. Yeah. And he came up and he just said, would, would you like some horn on it, Jim? And I said, oh, <laughs> please, <laughs> please. <laughs> so we, we did this song together and halfway through it, we just kind of looked at each other and thought, God, this is beautiful, yeah. you know? And uh, Snake then said, well, we both kind of said this. That was lovely. It'd be great to do it again. Mm. And uh, so Snake actually arranged some concerts and things. And we we've formed a band now. We're the smallest soul band in the world. You know, it's just shoes. the two of you. Just the two. Is, <laughs> uh, yeah, we're the blue shoes. No, 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 no rhythm section. No. No, it's just we no. we do it just acoustic and yeah. horn and, and flute and things like that. And it's it's beautiful. Because Snake plays uh, played a, a lot on M people's. Uh, I mean, you've played on everybody. I mean, just speaking of them, I, I mean, who haven't you played on, really? I've got a very, very long CV, like your arm. Yeah. yeah. But I've played with lots and lots. But I was closely involved with M people for yeah. about 10 years, be becoming the um, musical director, the mad dog, the MD. Do you, I mean, do you get, do you get fed up with, with uh, or did you ever get fed up? Because. The, 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 the sax player, the MD, the, they're the people who nobody knows, you know, although maybe some of uh, some of your music in, in a lot of these songs has made them hits and nobody nobody probably knew. A lot of them will probably have been used and mixed and synthesized everything else. Does it annoy you? Um, it, it never has annoyed me. The only things that just occasionally annoyed me was seeing other people miming my parts on top of the pops and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't mind about the money thing. You know, we, get, we get reasonably well paid, and, and I love playing live, and I love playing in different situations. But you know, I played that, that solo on um, a million love songs here. Yeah. I'd take that one, uh, and I didn't know it was a hit. And, uh, I'd heard it on the radio a couple of times, but then I saw somebody else pretending to be me on top of the pops. So, <laughs> so I phoned them up and said, lads, that's not on, so they, uh, they did invite me to come and do the rest of the TV. So. Yeah. And uh, that's the only thing, when a part was very, very much my own, and it sort of come from inside me, it just made me feel a little bit weird to see other mm. people pretending it was theirs. But actually, as, as far as not being named and not being up front, um, that never worried me because that was kind of the understanding that mm. things would be that way. But then I love this situation with Jim where, where we're equal and we're both fronting and we both chat on. And, and I, do, I do love the limelight, just, just as anybody else does. I, I actually, we, we came to see the Lever and Stollard benefit. Mm. You, you did your, uh, your solo in, and I have to say that that was an amazing solo you did. And, and the smallest uh, saxophone I've ever seen. Yeah, the, the baby sax, yeah. yeah. She was a little tidger. But I, I loved that, and I thought Heather sang really well. And, uh, I, I did enjoy that moment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, now um, the the reason Jim you came into mind, not because I'm not always thinking of you and, 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 and love you dearly, is that I was watching Stars in Their Eyes the other night. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> was it the final? It was, wasn't it? It was. Again, yeah, it was the, the final. final yeah. And uh, the person who did you, mm -hmm. um, who, who was already, you know, I didn't, I never understand really the, the what they hoped to achieve from that. But uh, you were very gracious on your little bit and uh, thanked him for it. I mean, he didn't sound anything like you whatsoever no I didn't have your soul but then he didn't write the song he didn't write the song but I, the thing is when they when they phoned me and told me <laughs> he, that he was going to do it mm. the, the first question I asked was obviously how does he know what I look like you know because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've been away for so long you know well, why but, have you been away for so long I ask I, you this all the time why did you suddenly seem to give up I didn't give up. I just didn't, oh. I, I couldn't find anyone that I was really comfortable with. I, I didn't want to be on my own mm. because I was kind of after PhD when when I I done the solo record. I was I, I wasn't happy at all at any time then because I I'd always been in bands. I mm. never unlike Snake who was always in the the back. I was always pushed to the front, you know. And I and I get really tired. I just wanted to be in a band and and be part of, mm. you know, like when I was with Alexis Connor. So I was just a singer and and I was really happy. So I I just get tired of it. But did you? I mean, did you make enough money in that uh, just not to have to work again, or only if you want to? I made enough money to to make sure that the kids were okay, 
you know. I've, I've always made a living mm. out of music, you know. And I was writing other things. I wrote some things for Channel 4 and things like that that I get paid for. Yeah. But, I mean, I wasn't making the, the money that I made when I was, uh, you know, in the charts all the time. Do you, I mean, did you ever, do you get bored sometimes? I mean, not now, obviously, because now you've got the, uh, you've got the bug to go back and, and yes. work. But, I mean, did you get bored not having to get up and go out and do something or go on tour? Or? I get, yeah, I mean, I really miss singing because it's all, I've, it's all I'm any good at. It's all I've ever done, mm. you know. Yeah, you, so, you was a bit stir-crazy when I met him. I, really? I was, yeah. You needed somebody to bring him out the house. Yeah. I, I was, yeah. But I, I hadn't. I hadn't been inspired, mm. you know, maybe because I wasn't out, that's not because there's not great musicians out there. But there isn't but much, you know, I mean, okay, there is great music out there, lots of great musicians, but the music that, that's in the chart a lot of the time now is not very stimulating, is it? No, it's, it's kind of pure I don't know. But it's for a different market. I think there's two different markets now, mm. really, that people haven't recognised. You know, there's the market for kids. And God bless them, you know, they, they've got to have people to put in their walls. That's that's a great thing, you know. Mm. And then there's the other market where you, you know, although it's in the same chart, it's kind of different stuff, you know. Stereophonics, Travis, all these kind of things are serious mm. music. Mm. Next to Steps, which is serious for a kid of six or seven, you know, they, they love that kind of stuff. So, and they should have it, mm. you know, it, it should be there for them, so... I, d I don't think you seem to me. I mean, I don't know. We're just uh, <coughs> hugging you earlier. It seems to, if you'll excuse the expression, you you either been working out or doing the garden or something. <laughs> what have you been? <laughs> Tell him the truth. Please. Well, I swim every day for my voice. No. Yes, I do. I Why? Because it helps my breathing. Because yeah. you had problems, didn't you? You had sort of, didn't you have a nasal problem? Or, <laughs> have you still done it? What? No, no. I, no. no. Sorts out no. your diaphragm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, Andy's, got, Andy's <laughs> got a swimming pool at home, of course. No, I haven't, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but, I'd, yeah, I've been swimming a lot. And because I wasn't touring, you know, I was, I was just, I, I, I kind of... Well was just sitting about, really. I think I asked you this before, I can't remember, because it's about three years since we met. Um, do, I mean, do you, do you miss Scotland or not? I don't miss it because I go back there. I was back at the weekend, actually, for a, a friend of mine's daughter's wedding. So I, I, I don't miss it because mm. I go there. But, I mean, I, I, I feel very Scottish. I've always felt I belonged in Scotland. But my family now are here, and I love England. Mm. I love London. You know, I, I, I think it's the, a fantastic place. And my kids love it, so I'm kind of stuck here with them. Now, there's a whole new audience out there, um, people who, who maybe uh, were too young to remember the, your hits in the 80s. Yes. And, uh, but but uh, everybody will remember Boom. Well, no, they might not. No, they, they might, might not. not. They, they might not. <laughs> <laughs> they might not. The blink of an eye after 40, I'll tell you. <laughs> Really? Is that right? Do you think? I think so, yeah. Things go really quick. So there'd be sort of... Uh, anybody around sort of uh, teenage and, and young 20s may have absolutely no idea who I'm talking to. Absolutely. So it'd be interesting After to see stars you in your eyes, but I became <laughs> famous again. <laughs> <laughs> now, you, you, you wrote the theme to Boom, didn't you? I did, yes. Which was called, what was it called? Remind it was me. called High Ho Silver. That's right, because there was a Jeff Beck song, and I always get it That's confused, right, which is yeah. nothing like it at all. Well, actually, you nicked it from Jeff. No, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. Because <laughs> I don't think he... Did he write it? I don't no. know. Somebody wrote the lyric. I know somebody yeah. wrote, the, wrote the lyric for it. Can you remember that, the, the theme to Boom? Or not? Can you do me a bit? Yeah, absolutely. Do you mind? No. But do you want the intro? The whole lot. Yeah, the whole lot. Mr. Elsick is listening. If he's able to listen, it'll it'll. No, nah, he won't be listening. No, nah, he probably won't. You're right. Sometimes I sit, yeah, tired and alone. No one to talk to, cause I ain't got no telephone, yeah. And at night I wake up, I just lie and stare, yeah. Come on and save me from this nightmare. You know you can't hide your silver. Come the Lone Ranger, yeah. Riding on down, Lord, yeah. Rescue me. Yeah, no. 
Thank you. Uh, hey. <laughs> you know, that swimming certainly has been doing you a lot of good, hasn't it? What a voice. We're going to take a break. Come right back after this. The Talk Sports Singles Connection is the Venus Road. God. 
The lovely thing is you still enjoy singing them, don't you? It's not a chore to you. No, no. Because so many people I meet and singing, I don't want to... Uh, well, no, I, I don't like to sing now. You know, people have been huge stars who, who, who've made great music and they, yes. they, they lose the sort of enthusiasm for it. No, I, I, if somebody loves us, I was brought up <coughs> singing in the pubs of Glasgow, you know, and you had to do what people wanted. Yeah. That's what you were there. You were there to make them happy. And that was your job, you know, and I still I still see that as my job, you know. If somebody wants something and they've paid, mm. they've paid, you know, they're working hard. I'm lucky, I do what I love. Some folk don't, and it's a big thing for them to come and spend money. Yeah. So it's terrible to say to them, well, no, you're... You're not included. I'm not going to make you happy tonight because yeah. I don't feel like it. When, when you, Snake was telling me that the, 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 you're going on tour is sort of around about September time, but you have a website. We have. We've done about, I think, about 15 or 16. Snake's better than me. Yeah, we've done that. <laughs> we started doing little shows, art centres, yeah, and uh, yeah. you know, back rooms in pubs and th little theatres and stuff. We've probably done getting on for about 20 gigs, a couple yeah. in London, and loads up in the north of England. Mm. And we've got a, a bunch of dates in September, and then um, a, few, a few more tours at the end of the year. And we're really going to be getting busy early next year. Mm -hmm. For the time being, people can find out all about the dates on my website, which is snakedavis.com. Yeah. And then we'll soon have the Blue Shoes run up and running as well. And, um, and folks can email us. We're with the Blue Shoes at Hotmail. <laughs> the blue shoes at Hotmail. You like that, com. do you? I love that. Yes. <laughs> and if there's an agent out there, then we really we want to work much much harder. We're doing kind of half a dozen gigs uh -huh. a month, but we we, we both sort of so well, come on. The two of you know life. all the top agents. I mean, we, you just have to go and ask an agent. We don't to get actually. Your gigs. Yes. You see, the very top agents aren't interested because they work at that you know super high Elton John level. The, the ones at the bottom are no good to us because they get crap gigs. Yeah. We want somebody in the middle, I and mean, we don't seem to know anybody. Because <laughs> we're, we're always operating. Cash will do their agency. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> what do you think, man? Yeah, man. Oh, we yeah, could, we, we can, can, uh, you know, we could get them gigs. We'll get you some gigs, man. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's a fox and goose. Down fox and goose sounds fox good. Fox and goose. I, I, and, uh, actually, and hounds. actually, I think we've done the fox and goose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and we sold out two nights. Hostile. Hostile. I mean, I, I would have thought. 
sure. The, the, there are a, a number of television shows as well which would, would be just sort of... Um, when the late lamented This Morning comes back and various other things, you, you just, the two of you, I mean, you've both been on those sort of programs anyway. Yes, as individuals. Yeah. But this is, see, this is, I know it sounds really crazy, you know, but this is really exciting for us. No, I'm watching you. I'm watching you like a couple of kids with a, a, a new <laughs> toy, really. Or a new yeah. actor, James. And, and <laughs> the thing is, James, because we decided we could have called it, you know, Jim Diamond and Snake Davis. Mm. And and everybody would have came and wanted Snake to do, you know, his M people things and mm. the rhythmics things and the stuff. And me to do, you know, be But really what we do together isn't any one of us as a part it is actually mm. when we're together it's different you know so, so we we thought we'll call it the name it you know we'll call it the blue shoes because it's kind of gentle and so people are some people are coming to the gigs and halfway through that it's kind of dawning in them who we are you know which is wonderful you know i'll do a song in the uh -huh. book are you and I say yeah that's oh my god you know and <laughs> and that's great so we don't want we want to really start as the blue yeah. shoes and, and so will you do a CD will you put together a, a CD or well we will yeah, yeah. We, we're going to record in September yeah we, we'll, we'll definitely we may start with an EP we, we've actually done a little live CD that we, just as a calling card and to sell at gigs mm. And, and we thought we might start with it with an EP or a single to, as an intro introduction to, <laughs> see, to radio. But we are, uh, we're like, we're just two guys yeah. who don't know anybody and it's a new band and God willing or talent. I know that, but that I, I'm, I'm serious. I know that sounds daft, but yeah. I'm really serious. You know? Well, go around some of the ages, ring some of the ages, you can go and talk to any of them. They'll all want to sort of uh, say, well, we'll see what we can do. We'll get you a few gigs, you know. The thing is with bands, like playing... You know, just playing gigs, it's not really how bands get commercial success these days, is it? It's changed, right? Well, it's an old-fashioned way of doing it, but, but it suits us, we love it, you know, and, yeah, and it yeah. just feels just it dead right. Be that way. But, I mean, presumably, you, I mean, you, you must be booked up all year doing session work for different people. Well, or I've actually turned down a couple of big tours lately because we're, we're committed to doing this, which mm -hmm. kind of financially hurts, but it's, a, it's a, what I want to do, definitely, so... Were you on the Tina Turner tour or not? No. Because there was, a, there was a, uh, a saxophonist on the Tina Turner tour who had, I thought it might have been you wearing a wig. <laughs> and hair right down to his bum. I don't wear wigs. And... <laughs> it doesn't do wigs. Doesn't do it doesn't wigs. do wigs. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, I don't know. It was... Uh, but, but, but you've been with... Who, who t just go through some of the people you've been with. Um, the last big world Play tour was... Sorry, was, thank you, pardon. The, what? <laughs> the, last, the last big world tour was the Eurythmics when they reformed. Yeah. We went... We did a whistle stop around the world, which is very exciting. Um, and people, obviously, Lisa yeah. Stansfield, who uh, uh, unfortunately have just had to um, say that I couldn't rejoin the band because she's back out doing dates now. <laughs> but, you know, we were in Beverly Playhouse and at a gig in Wakefield Sports Club and two other gigs the week yeah. of her tour. So uh, I'm committed to doing those because they're Blue Shoes or Snake yeah. Davis shows. Yeah. Um, who else? Swing Out Sister. Had a lovely few years, you know, in Japan and the UK with, with Swing Out. But uh, on record, Paul McCartney, Ray Charles. Well, Ray Charles live too. Mm. Ray Charles. Mm. That's yeah, a great big yeah, long yeah. list. Take that. Bewitched. <laughs> you did with Bewitched. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> My little whistle there. Apparently, Bewitched are doing quite well in America. That's why nobody's heard of them for a while. They went yeah, to America. Went to, and went they to did America quite with well. them three or four times. Really? And did the big TV shows and, uh, there. and the special, big special for Disney. Who's your favourite now? Or well, the new stuff that's in the charts. Um. Because Ash and I are very big. Big fans of Atomic, was it Pussy? Yeah. Atomic <laughs> <laughs> Kitten. Atomic Kitten. Yeah, I watched them from behind the other day on a TV show. Did you? The Springer show. Um, what are they like watching them from behind? From behind the front. <laughs> are they as good as from the front or better? I've never seen them from the front. Uh, what, what a job. Hey, that's the thing. <laughs> I should have really learned a musical instrument because you think yeah. of those people you could yeah. be behind. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's what about being a sound man, man? Yeah. <laughs> that, 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 that pack on there. Yeah, you oh, should know, should you? Little microphone. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I like being to the right of Jim, though. That suits me. All right, we're going to be back in a moment. We're going to take a break. Jim Diamond and Snake Davis are with me. And uh, I don't know, anybody want to ask a question or any sort? I, don't, I can't imagine it. But if you do, call us 08704 202020.
You know, I quite like being a wolf. Me too. And I'm proud to belong to our fine pack. Best there is. But I've got a niggling suspicion about Fang over there. Really? What's wrong with him? Well, he looks like a wolf. He's got the right kind of fur. He smells like a wolf. It's just that when he opens his mouth... Oh, Fang! <coughs> Would you care to join us for a bite? <laughs> Unlike some other sports coupes on the market, the Toyota Celica is a wolf in wolf's clothing. The Celica range from £16,980. Arrange a test drive at your local Toyota dealer. The car in front is a Toyota. New hope. New glory. A new season. And the fastest moving football show on the radio returns once again. Football first on Talk Sport. From August the 18th, hear all the games, all the goals, all the time. And of course, full premiership coverage, comment and debate. Prepare yourself for the return of the only results service you'll ever need. Football first on 1089 and 1053 AM. Talk Sport. All they wanted was a drive time show on the radio. And for their sins, Talk Sport gave them one. Yeah. Coming low behind the rising sun and at 4 p.m. we'll bring on the sports stuff. You guys do sports during drive time? Yes, gets the hell out of the competition. Hawks and Jacobs afternoon apocalypse. Tomorrow afternoon from 4 on Thorpe Sport. James Ware, James Ware, James Ware. Okay, uh, 08704 2020 20, if anybody has any questions they'd like to ask, or um, I don't want Nigel ringing in and asking to sing a duet uh, with Jim, all right? Because we know we're, we're doing it seriously, but just if uh, there's any old fans or uh, people out there who uh, are as old as me and, um, and remember Jim. Um, Tell me when you were in the pubs in Scotland, this will freak you out. Uh, what sort of songs were you singing? Were you singing your own songs or were you singing other people's songs? Or oh, No, I was singing other people's songs and soul, soul music really in yeah. Glasgow then. What sort of? Otis Red and Sam Cooke, you know. Do me that. something. <clears throat> Do me something. Do me something. Okay. Because you know, soul is my... When I, when I first became a DJ, Marvin Gaye had... Uh, I heard it through the grapevine at oh, number yeah. one. Marv Johnson and I pick a rose for my rose. Oh, I remember do, that. Do you remember I that? I do, yeah. That yeah. was a great record. That was, wasn't it? Great sound mm. to that. The kind of sound like, uh, who was the guy that done uh, that wall of sound? Phil Spector. Oh, Phil Spector. It didn't yeah. sound like that, but it, yeah. it was one of those records that had a sound as if, well, that's really different, mm. you know? Jimmy Ruffin. Oh. What uh, who still sings and, 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 and lives in this country. <coughs> Fantastic. And Edwin Starr, who I had on my TV show uh, um, uh, once and Could came along. the Lieber and Stoller thing. He did, actually. Yeah, he, he did, did, yeah. did that. Yeah, but have you ever seen him it. sing with his band or a band of... Uh, he just sees amazing. I actually saw him... Uh, it was very bizarre. I saw him at Twickenham Rugby Club <laughs> when New Zealand played France. I yeah. think he, he played before the show, you know. The, mm. He was great, actually. He got everybody jumping, you know. I put a band together for him once to do all the pure Motown stuff, yeah. strictly the 60s stuff, yeah. as opposed to the more disco things. And we did one show, uh, King George's Hall in Blackburn. Oh, right. It was fantastic. Mm -hmm. What a, I mean, it's great performance. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Is it only, is it me that when, I mean, when I hear Jim's voice, the hair on the back of well, what hair I've got left, Jim and I have very similar hairstyles. That's actually. why we like each other. Sympathy. But it makes the hair on the back of my neck stand up. And, and you know, he, hearing the old Motown music and, and Sam and Dave and uh, all, all the songs, stuff. I mean, I wonder if it makes uh, people who've not heard it before, does it affect them in the same way? It does. So. I mean, we're, we're finding that, you know, more young people than you'd think come to our shows and, and, and they stay and, uh, and they say how much they love it. And I think just passion and the kind of music that we love and the way we play mm. and sing, it, it works on everybody. Because there was a little soul renaissance when the commitments were around and when... Um, uh, do you remember, remember a band I, I had on the TV show a few times called Fast Freddy's Fingertips? Do you ever hear of them? I don't know. I don't know if they're still about Yeah, I played with him as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he had a good voice. He had an interesting, yeah, unusual voice. But yeah. yeah, I spoke to Freddie the other day. Very yeah. fast fingertips, man. Say hi to him for me. I will do, yeah. Come on, right. Let's have some music. <laughs> okay, see you on <laughs> got 
a smile so bright You know you could have been a candle Taking me back to my youth, the way you do the things you do. Who was it hit for? Sam Cooke, wasn't it? It was yes. Sam Cooke. It was Sam Cooke. Yeah, yeah. and he was Taking you back to your youth. Taking me back to my youth. Wasn't buddy. Glenn Miller? Shut your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to come in there and smack you in a moment. <laughs> Sound engineers are ten a penny, remember that. <laughs> <clears throat> and so you can get them actually more easily. They don't have a big gob, too. <laughs> Jim Diamond and uh, Snake Davis, my guests uh, tonight. Now, Soul music is something that I don't think we have enough of. And it's amazing. The two of you make a huge sound, don't you? I mean, you don't need the drums and uh, yeah. the violins and uh, no, half a dozen more horns. And I have to say, we've had some... Uh, in fact, every night we've just had some great nights with folk, you know? I mean, it's just been fantastic. You know, they're all smiling and singing, uh -huh. and it's been great. I mean, how many do you have... How many songs in your, in your repertoire now? I think... We've so about just over 20, I think. Yeah, I think we've got about sort of 23, 24, yeah. 25 probably to choose from. And uh, when we first got together, we thought, because I, I'm a songwriter, that I've always wrote my own songs. Mm. And uh, we thought, you know, usually when you get something together, you go, right, now we, we've got to spend 
nine months, you know, writing and recording and everything. But we realised that the the buzz we were getting was because we'd done this concert and the way we felt. Mm. So we just literally got together and said, right, what do you know? <laughs> you know, and what do you love? Yeah, you know, straight out on the road. And it was just we just went straight out. So they're not all your own compositions. No, uh, but I still love you was yeah. one of my songs. Yeah. And uh, I know. we do. Uh, I think we do about five or six of mine and about ten or something. But we're we're going to record in September, James. Yeah. So we're, we're I mean we were writing all day today, you know, and we've got stuff that you know is nearly there, you know. But we just wanted to play, and we yeah. thought. You know, we're, we're the smallest soul band in the world. So, so what, what are the other ones of other people that you do? Do me, do me that, because I just want to listen to the music for the rest of the show. <laughs> I, I don't have to do anything, and just you, you just you sit here and play music. If there's an agent listening, I'll, 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 they're looking for an agent, guys. They're looking, <laughs> they're looking for venues as well. You know, a couple of hundred seats or Absolutely, whatever. Absolutely, whatever. Nice little theatre in Harrogate would be good. Yeah, Maybe if you could get them. Yeah, I mean, we're going to play in the Mitre in Nesbury, and that'll start us off, and then we'll go back and play the Theatre of the Tower. <laughs> You're going to play the Mitre? Yes. <laughs> possibly Snake, will be the smallest Snake, gig we've done. Snake comes from the same sort of area that I live for a long time in, and <laughs> there are loads of pubs you can play in North Yorkshire. But Mitre, you know, foot and mouth now, you've got to be careful. You know, the wonderful, it's like when I did the Edinburgh Festival, you know, yeah. when you do these these smaller, like, little art centres, and there's just the two of you, it gets so intimate and close, it's quite scary, really. Folk. That's all right. No, sorry. I've got, I've got a call coming in. Oh, okay, right. then. Zade, Zade in London. Hi, Zade, you're on the air. Oh, sorry, no, we've got to Zade in a moment. Paul, who's on the A50. Hi, Paul. <laughs> Hello, James. Yes, Paul. Yeah, I've got a question for Snape. Go on. Well, what it is, is I, I've been sort of... I wanted to start playing for ages. But every time I've worked into a shop, like, I don't know what to start with, whether it's, you know, the alto or, or the bass or whatever. Well, who's your, who's your favourite player and, and who have you heard and liked? Um, or, or is there a record with some sax on that you could quote? It, it's just the sax that I like, and, you know, like Le, um, Lenny, Kenny G. Yeah. Ah. OK. Le I just feel drawn towards the instrument, but I don't know where to start. Yeah, well, so. he, plays, he plays mainly soprano, but I mean, I'd go for an alto or a tenor and just find a shop where you, you, you like the assistant and just get him to show you an alto and a tenor and pick the one that sort of feels right to you. Yeah? Yeah, oh, man. Brilliant. Thanks yeah. a lot. All right. Cheers, mate. Drive Cheers, safely, James. Paul. <clears throat> a lot of people love the saxophone. Oh. I want to want to learn how to play. Is it, <clears throat> I mean, is, is it as difficult as the trumpet or flugelhorn or not? Um, well, I mean, every every instrument has its own difficulties. I mean, it's easier to get a sound out of initially and, and knock a tune out of than the mm. trumpet, but, I mean, ultimately, it's dip every instrument How is... How many years have you been playing? I've been playing for uh, 25 years. Say no more. <laughs> <laughs> let, me go, let me go to Zaid. Hi, Zaid, you're on the air. Hi, uh, hi, is Snake there? Yeah, he's here. All right, Snake, how's it going, buddy? Yeah, good, thanks, yeah. I mean, yeah, I've, I've just introduced myself. Uh, I run um, about four or five live acoustic venues. Fantastic, and, uh, you're on that, yeah. And uh, they're, they're called Zarathustra. Okay. Acoustic Club. So uh, the reason I called, I was quite intrigued tonight, that you wanted uh, James asking you for a little bit of a mi middle-of-the-road gig. Um, well, we want, you know, sm smaller... 150 seaters and upwards where, yeah, where we can play like I've passionate. Just got, I've just got the one for you, mate. You know, you know the fridge in Brixham? Yes. Opposite the fridge, yeah. uh, th there's a bar called the Bug Bar. Yeah. So I'd like to invite you down there on the... Um, I'd, I'd like to invite you down there on on Halloween night. OK, well, let's get your number, buddy. We'll talk to you. There's four songs, and I'd love you to perform. Yeah. Snake, um, uh, give me an idea, but it's always supposed to be known for about six years. We've had, you know, Nick Harper? Yes, I know Nick Harper. I gave him his first ever gig. Fantastic, man. Sounds good. Tom, Tom we're, we're all smiling in here. Let's talk business. <laughs> Let's talk business, but uh, uh, Snake, all I'm saying is I'd like to invite, I actually compare the nights as well. Yep. I host it, and you are my guest. Fantastic, man. That's the show. That's putting people like me out of work, as far as I can see. <laughs> James, James, I'd love him to be, uh, to love him to yeah. be a part of his office. L listen, Zaid, what I'm going to do is I'll put you back to my friend Ash. 
Yeah. We call him Mr. 10%. He will take your phone number and I'll give it to the guys and they'll get in touch. That's cool. Have your credit card ready. Right. <laughs> Stay. Stay. Yes, sir. Stay. Be before we do that, do you, wanna, do, you know, do you want to know a little bit more about what we do and what we're all about? Well, we'll, we'll, we'll talk off air about that and I'll find out, you know, all, all about all about exactly. that kind of thing. Ash picks Zade up yeah. on, uh, on line four, thank you very much yeah. indeed, and I think he's probably spent round about 4,000 on free advertising, so get the credit card details after this. <laughs> Have you been involved in an accident? Do you need some to sell enough tickets for his new, new concert that he's seeing? But apparently they sold out in the first couple of hours, and, and Jim was saying, I don't know why I was worried about it. <laughs> no, no, I don't think I, I don't think it was actually him. I, th I think they just put they put a, it was just on the radio today. They said that he was doing new shows in America, and uh, they were a bit concerned because he had been away for a while, you know, with a <laughs> new album and things that they might not sell out. And I thought to myself, I wonder who was concerned. <laughs> so, <laughs> 2,500 £2, pounds some for some of the, some of the yeah. tickets, which is an extraordinary mm. amount of money, really. He's a, I mean, forget all the publicity and everything else that he's had, but he's a musical genius, isn't he? Oh, he's got one of the greatest voices yeah. of, you know, I mean... It's, Cause just, it's very, it's very, uh, very fashionable to have a go at him and you call him Wacko Jacko, and obviously he's a bit... But, but he just, I mean, I, I don't think there's ever been... No, he is the biggest star in the world. There's no shadow of a doubt about it. He invented it. moonwalking, for God's sake. He invented moonwalking. <laughs> and also, uh, even when he was younger, the records they made, the Jackson 5, when they were younger... I just, I was just thinking back to that, actually. The, yeah. uh, I Want You Back, and yeah. all those kind of things. Yeah. They're just yeah. monster I'll, I'll be there. I'll, I'll be there. there. That's the vocal. I'll be That's there. What yeah. a vocal, you yeah. know? And yeah. I mean, Jeremy and Jackson, all those guys, all the band could play, they were hot players, you know. They were just fantastic. It's just a shame that... Well, maybe it's not a shame, maybe he's quite happy. Everything right? everything goes on. I believe there's a reason for everything anyway. Um, let's, I'm uh, glad you said that. No, I do. I believe whatever happens is there's a reason for it. Whatever we're here and whatever we're doing, there's a reason for it. So, um, bearing that in mind, let's have another piece of music now. Um, which you want some soul I, music? Yes, yeah, some soul. Yes, yeah, some soul. Well, Sweet. Play, we should play the reason that we're here, which is you don't know me really. Okay then. Because that's how we met and how it all started. Okay, this is. This is what you were playing when you suddenly decided you formed this little band. Yes, this was the one. Okay. It's an old, uh, it's an old country song really, but it's a beautiful song. You give your hand to me. that 
Very far, we did we? A good, well, we didn't have the lyrics. <laughs> you know what I mean? We know the high hopes well, over a bit. And then... No, you, no, you don't embarrass me, me anymore. Some in don't range up. Yeah, don't Riding embarrass me. Riding on down. <laughs> to risk Do you want to go on stars in their eyes or not? <laughs> Could I? No. Tonight, Matthew. <laughs> <coughs> Shall we get back to what I was trying to say? So tonight we're doing something different and... Uh, uh, they formed a new band, Snake Davis and Jim Diamond are now known as Blue Shoes. The Blue Shoes. The Blue Shoes. Uh, they're for hire, okay? Uh, they want to go out and do small gigs. They need an agent, they need bookings, and uh, if you want to find out more, go to snakedavis.com, and Snake's website will tell you more about what they're doing. They're writing music at the moment, uh, which I think you should have done years ago, but there we are. That's, uh, <laughs> Your last time, I suppose. Um, <laughs> that's the trouble. You pay musicians money or they make a lot of money. They get very lazy and he just sits at home sort of contemplating his navel and singing songs and everything else. The only reason he's coming back is because Richard and Judy have left. There's nothing to do in the yeah, daytime no. now. Do you find that? I do too. I don't know what I'm going to do now that yeah, Richard man. and Judy are off. Yeah. No, I think a lot of people are sad. <laughs> no, I really do think a lot of people are sad. I really don't know what I'm going to do. I, I tell you. <laughs> Uh, Ian is in Glasgow. He called in a while ago. I'm sorry to keep you waiting. Ian, you're on the air. Through to Jim Diamond. Hello there. Hello, Jim. Hello. How are you? Hi there. Um, well, I'm not so good, actually. Um, oh, I've been having a real struggle oh, getting goodness. myself uh, across um, in terms of my music. Um, James has the unique distinction of being the one and only presenter in recent times to have given us some any airplay whatsoever. Um, to remind me who you were, Ian, and who you were, well, were you? OK, then, James. Back in February, uh, I sent you a CD called Heartbreak Girls. And I remember, yeah. And it's a studio outfit called yeah. Household Names. Yeah. And uh, basically, I was hoping that... Um, does Jim do any production work at all, in any shape or form? I've, I've only produced one... I, I produced myself, Ian. Right, self-produced? Yeah, I, I, the only person I ever produced was uh, Zoot Money. And, and I remember Zoot Money and the big roll band, and he was a good friend of mine. Right. And uh, I produced it, and, and I said to him at the end, I'm never doing this again. So oh, really? Yeah, because I was... I, it's such an awful responsibility because I knew how talented he was and I, was, I kept worrying, was I doing it right and I somebody else gave him a better chance than me and I see. so I found it too worrying. I, I didn't even... <laughs> no, yep. I did. I was lying awake at night thinking, am I doing this properly? Because I, I know what it means to, to make a record. I know how important it is. So, so Ian, actually, I remember now. Ian sent in a CD. Well, thank you, James. <coughs> and we played it, didn't we? Oh, and you loved it. I loved it. I've taped it. And you... <laughs> now, how old are you, Ian? Well, I'm 38. Yeah, because... I'm still younger than you. Yes. I'm diamond. Yeah, <laughs> you <I'm> are. Sorry. <laughs> but don't cut me off. No, I'm not going to. I'm not going to. Listen, I, I have a friend who's nearly 60, and he still thinks he's going to get a number one record. Well, that's fine. And, uh, <laughs> and strange things have happened, but... Um, it's, it's, it's difficult, isn't it? Well, it is really when uh, any kind of local commercial, maybe Jim Diamond will know this, um, that, uh, well, in Scotland, there's not that many really um, <coughs> big commercial radio stations. I mean, but, but you have to play gigs to get now, well, really. Well, well, actually, I have played um, mm. live uh, quite on, you know, 
not recently to be honest but in the sort of early to mid 90s I was involved with an organisation in Glasgow which was known as Glasgow Songwriters the infamous Glasgow Songwriters and we put in actually listening to Jim and Snake tonight that was very much the the kind of um, setup that was live and acoustic and uh-huh. um, that actually went on for quite some time brought out about four compilation albums cool. but the the long and short of it is if it doesn't get the airplay you know Ash touched on that earlier when he was talking about how you know it's still nice to play live uh-huh. and get that feedback but at the end of the day if you're not getting airplay that's why we, I was delighted in fact we were delighted that, that you gave not, us some airplay James it's, you know it's not a it's not only the airplay, it's okay having airplay, but unless you have, uh, as the record companies so uh, so beautifully put it, if you don't have product, then you're, uh, you, you, and if you don't have a big record company, then none of the shops are going to say, it's, it's, a bit, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a real bit of a, I don't know how music, when music started, rock, rock and roll started, you know, I mean, maybe back in the, in the late 50s or whatever, yes. it's like it is now, it was a lot more exciting. It was because people played gigs then. There was a lot of venues until the the, the DJs uh-huh. really in the discos killed all the venues because it, it was much cheaper to do that and hell. Thanks a lot. Uh-huh. No, I don't mean that. <laughs> you know, I, I, but you you know, yeah, suddenly no, instead of a, a, a band, the guy would book a DJ mm-hmm. because it was cheaper <coughs> and you know it was less hassle well, and all those kind of things. Well. C- could I ask a favour then, maybe, that um, even off air, if I could leave some contact details that either Jim, yourself, or Snake could get back to me or our manager um, at some later date? Would that be OK? Or am yeah, that, no, that would be fine, Ian, but I, w- I would say to you that... Uh, In terms of advice, really, as well, and well, maybe helping the contacts, because... I mean, as, as we were just saying to James, we're, I mean, we've just started a new band as well. I know everybody thinks it's, uh, but we're serious, you know, uh-huh. and, and we're, we're doing it the way I think you should do it, right? which is you, you just have to go and play to people because if people are in the same room with you and they see you work, that that's when they, they either think, oh wow, well, th- this is really wor- worthwhile, or they think, oh no, I'm not too sure about this. But if you yeah. get enough people saying, oh wow, this is worthwhile, yeah. eventually, it might take you a year or 18 months, you know, but you'll start filling little venues, and then people think, oh, why are they filling it? And well, of course. That, that's when people come. But I'd also say that uh, that you that you're making the mistake really of uh, uh, thinking that, that, that you know that you that you got to do music be, because you want it you know you because you want to be you know everybody to hear it which we all do and but that's no really you know you should you should just do it yeah and, no and, and, well, i do it because i love it there, there you go man and then if anything else happens that's because i i was surprised when they asked me to make a record when i was a kid i couldn't believe it uh-huh. because i thought well, why do you want to make a record with me? Because I, I just sung because I loved it. And, yeah. Uh, and who, I first, went, uh, who first discovered you, Jim? Who, who, who saw you singing then? I think that the guy who kind of put me to prominence in London was Alexis, Alexis Corner, mm. when, uh, when Alexis asked me to, to sing with him. But how did you get into a situation where someone like Alexis Corner, a lot of people won't even know who Alexis Corner was, he was yes. a brilliant, he had a, he had a couple of uh, hits, didn't he, in the yeah, 70s and 60s, and, and, and really made some am- amazing music, and then produced and stuff, he was and a, stuff for Mickey Most. And yeah, and he was a fantastically gifted man yeah. about music and the history of music, and he loved the blues, I mean, he really, I, I learned so much from him, and, but I... I mean, I, I went for an audition when I was 14 years old in Glasgow and got the job. Right. And, and that was only because I sung the right song. I mean, I wasn't particularly good. There was better singers there. And I'm not just saying that. There was a couple of guys who I thought, oh, well, um, yeah. these guys are great. But I just happened to sing a soul song and the yeah, band well, were a soul band. Let's not know? be overly modest, Jim. I mean, you have a, a, the most unusual voice. There is, I mean, there is only one Jim Diamond. Yes. I mean... And your voice is unmistakable. It's distinctive, isn't it? It is. But yeah. I, I don't... What I'm trying to say is, Ian, that I wouldn't worry about 
worrying about getting record companies and that kind of thing because if, well, you, if you do, it never happens, you know. Well, of course. And, and you end up sitting, because yeah. I did it when I was a kid, you sit for hours and hours yeah. talking about things when really you should be in the bedroom writing a tune well, because it, it will not help. Yeah. I, I would just go to the pubs, get my players run about me and say, you know, this is who we are and we believe it. And, right. And, that's about the only advice I could give you, but I'd, I'd you know, I'd definitely leave I mean, at, at the moment, if I could interrupt, we've actually got three separate, or we're on three separate websites. Mm. Oh my God, you've um, got more than me then. <laughs> and, and that's like, I was going to, you know, I was going to say off air rather than um, make a right. shameless plug on there. Go on, plug your website and then go. Is that right, you? <laughs> yeah, go on, go on. Oh, very go. good. Yeah. There's three websites, right, you'll get household names under the pop rock category. On Woof Music, that's as in dog barking. <laughs> cool. Woofmusic.com. Mm. Cool. And popwire.com. That's right. popwire.com. Yeah. Yeah. Let's not and labour it, just give okay, me plugs and then go. Uh, yes, and okay. peoplesound.com. Mm. All right, listen, Ian, take uh, take Jim's advice on board. I think it's great. If you, if you, I mean, I, I, that's the thing I regret. I always wanted to be a musician. That's how I became a DJ. Yeah, well, I always wanted to be a musician, and I, I, I'm tone deaf and uh, haven't got the patience to play an instrument, and uh, you know, so I just sponge off other people's talents, and then I found <laughs> I could just talk and didn't need music, so that was it. Uh, Ian, do it because you love it. Um, here's a, here's a lo emails coming. This is uh, one from John Hudson from Newcastle upon Tyne uh -huh. at the moment, and he says, uh, "Jim Diamond, you are a diamond, my son." He said, "Keep the songs coming. You've been sadly missed." Well, thanks very much. So, let's have a song. <laughs> Do you want to know, what will we do for, oh, I, I'll do an asshole one for you. Go on then. Because I know you love them. Go on then. A, a little version of it. Are you cool? True. Yeah, if you tell me what we do. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll just start with Oh, okay then. <laughs> Yeah, that. 
<laughs> Absolutely brilliant. <clears throat> that is so good. Do you know, what I want is to find a nice little uh, li little venue where uh, I can sit in a big comfortable chair, <laughs> eat a kebab, drink something. One of those hubbly bubbly pipes. One of those hubbly bubbly pipes. Yeah, man. And, uh, and just listen to you sing sort of all night. This is, this is, uh, I'm almost embarrassed to actually get paid to be here this evening. Um, <laughs> oh, you're, you're not getting paid. This almost. <laughs> almost. <laughs> um, Ruth Hopkins knows you. Uh. Do you know Ruth? She knows as well. Yes. And she says, uh, she's emailed me. See, this is, this oh, is well. brilliant. This wonderful people email you. come along and phone you. So I guess good, isn't it? It says, please remind those guests of yours to mention their website for gig dates. Tell Jim that he sounds great. Uh, love, Ruth. Uh, www.snakedavis.com because they are playing live around the country, all over the place. Uh, they could do with more gigs as well if you want to get in touch with them. <laughs> and they desperately need an agent. There is a new band called The Blue Shoes. And we'll be back after this. Ask yourself. Uh, go back to the 80s. You remember PhD, a huge band, which, of course, was, was Jim Diamond. And uh, he was telling me the story, he's sitting in Portofino, which uh, if anybody's been there on holiday, you know, is just a little sort of inlet. A little wind there, a little Beautiful bit. place. It, you go to Las Vegas and they've uh, redone it, apparently, in one of the hotels in... Lake Portofino? Yeah. Have they? Yeah, is it one of the, one of the hotels in, in Las Vegas? I think it is. Probably, that's what they do. <clears throat> or one of the... Anyway, they've redone Portofino, that little bit, in America. It's one of the, the most desert. beautiful places. If you can imagine it, it's a little bay and it's surrounded by rocks. And it's in Italy, and the sea's beautiful, and it's got that smell as well that's there. Yeah, I don't know where right. it's in the air. It, it's a beautiful place. And PhD, apparently, Jim was telling me, we were like wham in Italy. We were. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> we actually once, uh, uh, my, because uh, I never thought it would happen to me. You know, that you just get a taste of what happened to mm. the Beatles, and, and you, th you, you can't imagine it. And uh, I, I now have great sympathy for all those people because when we, PhD, when I Won't Let You Down came out, <coughs> it was the first time videos really. In fact, PhD, the, the video I Won't Let You Down, I, I read in one of these books, mm. was one of the first ten videos in MTV. It was one of the first ones ever when they started. And of course, it meant that people knew who you were and you, did it, that you didn't know they knew. Mm. So we arrived in Italy, and uh, typical, the, the car hadn't came to pick us up. So we thought we'll get a taxi, you know. So we all piled into this taxi, and uh, well, myself and Tony, and off we went. There's a hotel, this is a hotel. And the taxi driver smiling at us and going, yes, yes. And we're thinking, oh, everybody's very nice in Italy, you know. And we got round this corner, it was in Bari, which is right down in the sun. Wow. And uh, we came round the car, and the hotel, the, 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 the streets were just, I kid you not, there was thousands of kids, thousands of them, and they'd cut the street off. And we were thinking, wow, well, what's, what's going on, you know? And I says to Tony, Who, who's on, you know, who else is on? Because it was a kind of festival yeah. thing. And I said, well, Spandau Ballet. I says, oh, there you go, Spandau <laughs> Ballet. You know, that's, that's who they're here for. Yeah. So the taxi driver said, I, I can't get any closer and as close as he could to English. We said, that's okay, man. You know, so we got out and we got our bags out of the taxi. And we started walking through this crowd and saying, excuse me, you know, excuse me. <laughs> and I nearly got to the door and I says to this little girl, she was in front of me, I says, excuse me. And she turned and she just went, ah. And suddenly everybody went mental and they were ripping more clothes off and were hurt and we had like, what, what's going on? So the army came, I'm not kidding, <laughs> with batons, you know, and they were fleeing at these and we were going, no, don't hit the kids with the things, you know. So we get we get into the hotel and I'm, I'm I couldn't believe it, what happened, you know, and, and the girl for the record company said, Oh, your song, it's the biggest song in Europe, but, you know, you're on the TV all the time, and we're, where? <laughs> and that's when we heard about MTV. <laughs> now, you know, that was, I, I mean, it happened a couple of times, but mm. I, 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 I remember thinking, God, if this happened to me every day, I would, I, this must be terrible pressure. I mean, I never had that, uh -huh. you know, but when I see kids now, and, you know, what they had, those bands like yeah. that, 
There must have been a, a terrible strain, and I'm being serious. It must no, have been I know you. Terribly. Have. Because the reason, and I know, I mean, you, you, you're such a, in a way, isn't he, Snake? He's so shy and sort of um, almost apologetic for coming into the room. He's a non-pop star, yes. and, uh, and which is why he stopped performing for a while because he made a lot of money or thought, yeah, you know, it was comfortable. He didn't want to work anymore, and he thought, well, you know, um, I don't know what sort of went through his mind. <laughs> Well, he was certainly very uncomfortable with doing the, the big TV promo tours that you have to do at that level, and I don't think anybody really enjoys those when you go away to another country and you don't even get to, to sing live, you know. And, uh, but you I can't see him miming, actually. No, it doesn't, doesn't suit him at all. Did you mime? I had to mime a lot, yeah. Really? Yeah, I'd done many things that I, I regret, you know, that I really should have said, I'm, I'm sorry, but I can't do this. But then again, you know, you know people have got... You know, it's their job. Some mm. guy for the wreck, and he's got a mortgage, and he's got kids, and if you give him a hard time, <coughs> you know why. Mm. You know, his life is. You hard. had very long hair then, didn't you? I did. You were a new romantic, in fact. I was never a new romantic. Oh, come on, no, nearly. No, no, <laughs> no, I, no, no, I was never, never a new romantic. romantic. I, was, I was always a soul singer. I never. With the long Mac? With the long Mac, yeah. yeah. Which, uh, <laughs> that's what I mean. I was just, uh, I made many mistakes in my life. <laughs> and the long mic was probably one of them. Play the play, play us the play us PhD's biggest hit. PhD's biggest hit. The one that got your uh, clothes ripped By the way, did you, did you get your cases uh, into the hotel okay? Or? We did, yeah. But uh, the funny thing was, when, when we... When we got to the hotel and, you know, they, they obviously got us inside, mm. they then said, we'll go for a meal later. And we said, OK. So we went <laughs> we went to this restaurant that had a big plate glass window. I, I, if you go to Italy, you know the Italians. Yeah. I didn't know then. I did laterally because I'd done a lot of concerts and I had great friends there. And I suddenly understood that if you are on Italian television or the television in Italy, you are as if you are in something like, you know, EastEnders here. Next you, to the Pope. You, you, exactly, mm. James. Because uh, the Pope comes on every night at six o'clock or whatever it is, come it, rain or shine. And when we were sitting eating this meal, there was all these kids at the window mm. looking in at us. It was. And the guy went, oh, you're, this is great. He was really pleased. And I was like, oh, I don't think I can cope with this. And, I, I, I was, and they used to do things in Italy like there would be 30,000 people in a piazza and people would go on and mime two songs. <laughs> it was very bizarre. People like Toto mm. from, I mean, real musicians. And they would all go on we are back in track and mime a couple of, and when I first did it they said well you go out and you I said but I'm not doing it. they'll kill me if they find out we're miming mm. they'll, they'll kill me and they said no no Jim this is Italy this is what we do and now <laughs> but now they do it here now it's became a thing here mm. where you know, people, kids go to the park and people come on in mind. We should, but yeah, there yeah, they did it. Yeah. Uh, this was we should say that it's not because they can't play their instruments or sing, but oh, it's no. actually technically easier for us to get It's for the television, exactly. yeah. It's yeah. no one went, oh, I'm, I don't want to do it. And even the kids now, everybody wants to do mm. it live, you know, but you're told, well, no. And that, when it first started happening, yeah, I was at the beginning, so mm. I was like, Oh no, if they find out, they'll, you know, they'll never buy my records and throw things at me and think, what a cheat, and, you know, and they're, no, 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 Jim. Who came up with the name PhD? I did. Why? Because there was three guys in the band, Simon Phillips uh, and Tony Hymas, who were with Jeff Beck band, mm. and myself, and we couldn't think of a name. And it was at the time when everybody was kind of, you know, saying their names, you know. And I just sat down one night and I, I went, oh, look, a PhD, that sounds, that sounds really good. And uh, everyone thought we were really clever, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and they were sadly disappointed when they met me, let me tell you. <laughs> You're the one without the PhD. And I've got a great story about that as well, I'm sorry. I was, I was doing the Edinburgh Festival and I, was do I did this song, this PhD song. And this guy up the back went, because people chat away to us when we play, and he went, Jim. And I said, yes. He said, who sang that song? 
I said, I sang that song. And he went, I know you just sang that song. <laughs> <laughs> but who had the hit with it? He said, but who sang it? I said, <laughs> oh, I sang it. He went, I know you just sang it, but who's... I said, no, 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 I sang it then, and I sang it before. And he went, yeah, I know you sang it, and you might have sang it before, but who sang <laughs> it originally? <laughs> I said, and people are turning around think, and shouting, he sung it, and he's looking at them going, I know he sung it, um, but somebody else. <laughs> and eventually I said, you mean PhD? And he went, that was it. PhD, I said, yeah, Phillips, Hymas and Diamond. And he went, oh, my God, I'm so, so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so nobody knew it was me yeah, anyway, yeah. you know. I think they probably did, but still. <laughs> I think they're going a little too modest here. What was it? I mean, how many, how many hits did PhD have? If we had two big songs, yes. uh, I Won't Let You Down, yes. All Over the World, really, and we recorded a song with Jeff, Jeff Beck, yes. playing guitar called I Didn't Know, which was a big, big hit in Europe, you know. Do I Didn't Know? I Didn't Know. Mm. Oh, no, I, I, I don't do that, because it's all keyboard. <laughs> I thought you wanted me to do I Won't Let You Down. I do, I'm only teasing. <laughs> I'm only teasing. Oh, he's a tease. Okay. This okay. is Melinda's favourite song. We dedicate this to my wife for some 30 odd years. Okay, this is my first wife at the moment. <laughs>
That's amazing. That takes me back. <clears throat> does it take you back? It does, yeah. Yeah? It does. It okay. was great. Ellen in Glasgow, you're on the air on the James Wells Show with Jim Diamond and Snake Davis. Hi, James. How you doing? Good. Hello, Ellen. Hi, Jim. How Hello, you doing? Darling. How you doing? Man, that's what you call music. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I used to listen to you. Oh, man, it's brilliant to hear you again. Oh, that's kind of you, Ellen. Excellent. Brilliant, man. It's just, I've just dozing away there listening to you, you know. Bring back a lot of memories, you know. Oh, thank you. Listen, James. Yeah? I sent a tape in with a man's music. It's called Ism. Ism? Yeah. Yeah. Could you, like, give some feedback on it? Because he's a bit like Jim. He's, you know, he likes music when he's sleeping at night kind of thing. And, uh -huh. You know, kind That's of thing. That's clever if you can do when you're asleep. I will. <laughs> we'll have a look. We do what we do. We, every now and then we play uh, CDs from people who've uh, never oh, been hurt and they send it in. And uh, sometimes we play them, sometimes we don't. But we'll look for it. Could Jim, could you listen to it as well? I'll I see if I can find it, it and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll maybe uh, give it to Jim. Can I tell him, I'll, I'll, could you say that I love my husband and he's the best husband anybody could ever have? Oh, good for you. Uh, right, and he's a bit like James, you know, he's he had three cancer scares this year kind of uh -huh. thing, you know. And how is he now? Uh, he's, he's doing brilliant. He That's good. He really is. That's and good. That's I have good. to be well myself phone in after a few years and he's looked after us. You know, he's number one. I'm his number one fan. Ah, uh, you're a sweet but, Ariel. But could you go listen to his music and give some feedback on it? I right. really appreciate it because um, this uh, is, you know... I'll see what I can do. I really right. appreciate it. Thanks, Ellen. Really um, right. Can I say uh, about your health as well? It's great to hear you. I used to see you on telly as well. We used to listen to you on the telly and that. No. Well, Ellen, thanks very much indeed. Right. That's really sweet. Thanks a lot. Right. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Right. See you later, Jim. Bye. 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 See you later. Keep going. Bye. I think you're going to have to go and play in Glasgow as well some more. Because <clears throat> you've got a lot of fans there, haven't you? I have, yeah, I've got a lot of friends there. I've not, we've not There's a lot of people he owes money to there as well. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to go through the emails. If you want to email us, you can email me at talksport.net, click on the uh, on-air logo, or you can go to snakedavis.com if you want to send uh, emails or uh, messages or find out where they're playing as well. Uh, Laura McManus... Was we, so we were just talking to Was that Laura McManus? No, it wasn't, was it? No, it's Ellen. No, that was uh, Ellen. Do you know Laura McManus? No. Okay, from Whitehaven in Cumbria. She's emailed us. She's listening. She said, I just want to say hello to Snake Davis. Uh, he's a cool guy. It's the giggly girl from Rose Hill. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> the giggly girl, yeah. right? Saxo saxophonists always have the major groupies. Have you ever noticed that? <laughs> How do you make him giggle, man? <coughs> is that what that little sax is? Just take a break and shut up. <laughs> we know you've done it. Lime scale, grease, grime and stains. The problem with your type is your scum. Soap scum. Well, you're nicked. Shock, bath power and kitchen power. The amazing cleaners with no bleach, no chlorine and no ammonia made from natural plant extracts are taking the nation by storm. I liked it. It not only looks clean, but it feels clean. It's just fantastic stuff. Bath power and kitchen power remove lime scale, grime, grease, stains and soap scum with no hard work or your money back. Shock, bath power and kitchen power actually work. Available in leading supermarkets everywhere. All right, Harry. Ain't seen you in donkeys. You do know Chainsaw Charlie's after you, don't you? That's why I've been keeping my head down, isn't it? What you gonna done then, eh? Nothing. All Charlie said was getting rid of it. What? A body? No, his endowment policy. How's I supposed to know you can sell him and get up to 35% more? I just surrendered it, didn't I? Now he's after me. Says I made him look a right mug. Are you trying to tell me that you never heard of AAP? No, of course I have. Well, I just panicked. Well, I think you're going to relive that experience, me old son. Look who's just walked through the door. Harry. 
better not surrender your policy without talking to IAP. Tell them, Harry. Call AAP on 0845 treble 2 1967. Louder, Harry. 0845 treble 2 1967. It's been financial. AAP are regulated by the Personal Investment Authority. The memorabilia show with John Cairns on Talk Sport. This week, the Talk Sport auction item is an amazing framed and signed presentation photograph of the legendary Bobby Moore. Make your bid, make it now. TalkSport.net. And join me, John Cairns, for the memorabilia show tomorrow afternoon from one on Talk Sport. Tickety boo. Thank you very much, you did. Welcome back to the James Well Radio Show. Uh, taken over by the uh, the Blue Shoes, the new band with Jim Diamond and Snake Davis. Um, Patrick from Essex, thank you very much, you did, for your email. And uh, we've had all sorts of emails. I, you know, I haven't, I must be remiss of me, I didn't realise that John Walters had died. He did, yes. Who was John Peel's producer for many, many years. John Peel's producer played uh, trumpet with Alan Price, two of the Alan did. Price set, uh, yeah, did. for the first, I think, six records or something. Do you know, I mean, I, I met him a few times, I hadn't seen him for years, so I, d I really didn't know. Sad um, loss, actually, he was, a, he was a good man for music, he, yeah. he knew his stuff, yeah. In fact, this is, uh, Patrick says, uh, John, I don't know why, but when I read that he had died, I thought of you. You see, I remember the James Well radio show and remember when he was on there with you. I was on that show once as one uh, of your Whaley's Whalers, or whatever it was you called them. <laughs> I remember those times fondly. Anyway, it seemed to me at that time that you knew John uh, well, so I just wanted to say... Well, I was very sorry to hear the news. Thanks very much indeed. Uh, see you later. Love the show. Mogga. Cool. He calls himself. That's good. Um, James Vieira from London so it wants to know what was the best gig you ever did? Best gig I ever did? <coughs> Goodness me. Pro such a difficult question to answer. I'll have to give you the good answer, an easy answer. What's that, the last one? The next one. The next one, yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I mean, I, I, I remember one night when I, I did the Edinburgh Festival, it was fantastic, and it, it was a real emotional night. And then, I mean, some of the, the, the gigs I did when I was a kid with the soul bands mm. were just, because then everybody was... It wasn't a bit, start. you know, it was just a bit, let's dance and let's have a great time. Did it for great. a while become less, less exciting and less entertaining for you when you were doing it really seriously and there were lots of people, you know, managers and uh, record company executives and accountants and it was all money, money, money. Did it lose its appeal for a while for you? Yeah, it did. I, I, when I went solo, I, I kind of lost it because I, I, I don't think I was ever meant to be a solo yeah. artist and I didn't do it by choice everybody thinks that oh he left PhD when they were big and went and you know made a lot of money with, with solo records but PhD actually decided we had done two and a half years in the studio yeah. and it was like oh we're going to all do different things and I'd been writing with Graham Lyle from Gallic and Lyle and we had written I should have known better yeah. and uh, Derek Green at A&M it was A&M Records who said oh let's do it and I, I think I just, I don't, I mm. just went on and did it, and it wasn't... How until, many copies did that sell? Oh, millions. <laughs> no, really? really, really, uh, yeah, millions. Did you know when you wrote, I, I, I should have known better, that it would sell that many or not? I knew it was going to be a really big song. I, I could tell when I sat and sang it to people and their reaction to it. I Won't Let You Down, I didn't realise yeah. at all. I told them they were insane when they said they were going to release it as a single. And uh, that sold even more than I should have known <laughs> So that's probably why I never get a job in a record company. I just thought I Won't Let You Down was so off the wall. Mm. I, d I didn't think anybody would, uh, you know, really understand what, I was, what we were doing, you know. And in fact, it was released here and no one played it. And it, it was out for a year, and I, I remember Peter Powell, uh, who was a DJ in Radio I, London, I and I do remember. And uh, he went to Australia on his holidays, and he was on the beach. It was number one in Australia for 16 weeks. 16 weeks? Yeah. <laughs> it held the record for I don't know how long. It was like yeah. Brian Adams, one of those things. And uh, he had it on the beach, and he, he brought it back. 
he said this Australian band and uh, he said, everybody thought we were Australian I remember when we first did Top of the Pops Kim yeah. Wilde came up to me and says oh hello Jim hello Kim how are you she says how long have you been here you know and I said well all my life <laughs> she said you're not Australian I says no we're, 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 we're British you know we're Scottish yeah. English but he had obviously assumed it was Australian and uh, God bless him because if he wasn't have brought it back you know probably no one would would ever have heard it and because of that it became just just math I mean yeah. it was massive song you know okay um, this is from Alex in uh, Hertfordshire says I'm 17 I've been playing the guitar for two years I've written lots of songs but I would like to ask some advice from your two guests for some tips on writing better songs. <coughs> you, you just got to live, Alex. It's just about living. The, the more you live, the, the better they become. And, you know, those things that happen to you and you think, well, that was really important, you know, sometimes to your mum or something. You know, sit down, because they're usually the easiest to write if it's something that uh, applies to you. You don't have to search for it, it's mm. there. And if you look around the house and all that, there's, you know, you ask your daddy to tell you his life story and things like that, and you'll be, you'll be, you'll be there all night writing, you know. But it's really a bit uh, growing up, and you know, unless you're born a genius like Stevie Wonder or Paul McCartney or these people who are just, you know, God's gave them a tremendous gift. But if you're a mere mortal, you just growing old and keep them doing it. Just do it all, all the time. It's like everything, mm. the more you put in, the, the more... But all you of your out. songs have, I mean, all of your songs are great songs, which will live on, and other people will cover your songs. Yes. And you don't mind that? No, I love no. it. I, I think it's a great yeah. compliment that somebody... Which is, we bring ourselves full Back circle. To full circle. Because uh, when we were watching Stars in Their Eyes the other night, and this lad came on and sang, I suppose your biggest hit is Jim Diamond. Yes. Without okay. a shadow of a doubt. Absolutely. Um, which I'm going to ask you to do in a minute. Oh, okay. And then we're going to be finished because then we've done two hours. Oh, wow. <laughs> but just just before we do that, just remind, we, we, you were sitting, we were talking about this and you, we didn't finish the story. You were sitting in Portofino. I was sitting in Portofino. Big star, and the bloke came up, an, old bloke. An old fella came up and he, he scruffed past and he said, oh, you're a PhD, you're Jim Diamond. And I said, yeah, that's right. He says, oh, my, my daughter loves you, you know, you'll come to dinner tonight. And I said, well, no, we're, we're actually at the hotel here. He said, no, I insist, you know, you, you must come to dinner. And just before he had come up, I'd said to this fellow I was with, because there's these beautiful houses that jut out over the cliffs, mm. as you know, James, overlooking the yeah. bay. And I says to this fella, just before this old fella came up, now if I won the pools, you know, I'd, I'd buy that house there, this beautiful big villa. That one at the so end, the big one right, on, on the, the big rock with yeah. the, yeah, lovely. Yeah. Looking over. Yeah. And uh, he said, come to dinner, and I, and I eventually badgered us, and I says, okay then, where, where do you live? And he says, I, I live just there, and it was that house. And we went to dinner there that night, and he had a butler, and they had the whole nine yards. It was quite, and, and there was paintings on the wall like real yeah. Picassos and yeah. stuff. You know, the real thing. You know, and uh, he was a financier. This guy, uh -huh. and uh, his daughter was great. And it, I mean, he, he took us to a. He was a fantastic old fella, but you wouldn't have thought he, he had anything. So, really? You, when you yeah. saw, you would have thought that he was bringing the papers to the shop or something. You know, and he owned this amazing place. And was the food good? The food was amazing, James, because he was Italian. No. He was an Italian and man. And did you actually get, pl did he ask you to play anything? Did you sing a song? I did sing for him, yeah. Yeah. But I had to sing a cappella because I didn't have an instrument <laughs> with him. <laughs> but I was frightened to say no in no. the end because I thought yeah, he's yeah. too wealthy. He might yeah, follow yeah, me. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. But he was a wonderful guy. He tried to sell me a floor in a hotel in Luxembourg. Mm. But you didn't buy it? I didn't mm. have enough money. <laughs> Listen.
Christmas soon. <laughs> Melinda, Melinda can stand on the door and take the money. She's good at that sort of stuff. Uh, and I think you should be playing pizza in the park in London before long as well. That's a great gig. You, no, you'd really be good, good. there. Um, this has been uh, The Blue Shoes, uh, Jim Diamond and Snake Davis, and uh, they will be appearing all over the country. Go to their website, snakedavis.com. I'll be back tomorrow. Uh, Ian Collins is next to play us out tonight. This was the biggest hit of all time for Jim Diamond, and uh, it's just a great song. It's called? I should have known better. I should have known better To lie to one as beautiful as you I should have known better To take a chance on ever losing you You'd understand. Can you forgive me? I saw you walking by the other day. I know that you saw me, you turned away, and I was lost.
Shuru Nombe Tulai 